The wave warp effect is found under the distort category, and if I apply it to a layer, it's going to immediately generate this sine wave type of warp. Now, like a lot of distortion effects, it's a lot easier to see what's going on if I make a grid really fast. I'm gonna add the grid effect and make it square, put it below my logo, and I'm actually gonna cut that wave warp and add it to a new adjustment layer so that we apply this distortion to the entire composition. Now that distortion pattern is very obvious. And I can change the wave height as well as the wave width to completely customize how this distortion looks. So I'm gonna make it nice and tall, nice and wide. And then we're gonna take a look at the wave types. There are lots of options in here. If we switch it to square, then we're not gonna get that smooth curviness between the peaks and the valleys of our wave. It's just shifting sections of the frame up or down. The next option is triangle, where we're getting angled distortion, but it's not smooth, it's nice and sharp. Sawtooth, which is slightly different. Circle, again, just a different shape for that warp. Semicircle. Uncircle. Noise, which is pretty random. And smooth noise, which just smooths it out a little bit. So lots of options. I'm gonna switch that back to sine wave for now. And I'm also going to play my composition to show you that this effect is animated by default, where the distortion is oscillating throughout the composition. We can change the direction of that warp just by adjusting this dial right here. And if I made my wave width big enough, it would almost look kind of like a flag flapping in the wind. We can change the wave speed right here, which correlates to a looping point. If I undo back to where we see this much more symmetrically, I'm gonna take a snapshot on frame zero and then move forward 24 frames, which is one second in time. So right here, one second, 24 frames. If I show that snapshot, you'll notice that it's an identical frame. It's the exact same as frame zero. This basically controls the duration of the loop. So a value of one means one second, but a value of two doesn't actually mean two seconds, it means twice as fast. So a half of a second or 12 frames in this composition would be the same as the first frame. If I wanted to double the length, I would need to go down to 0.5, and now two seconds is going to be that loop point. One second is only gonna be halfway. So that's how that wave speed value works. I'll set it back to one, and then we'll look at the pinning options. Currently it's set to none, meaning it is distorting the entire frame freely. But if I were to change this to say all edges, then we're not getting those transparent holes around the edges of the frame. It's just warping the center and pinning all of the edges. If I change it to say the left edge, and again change that wave width way up high and change the angle, then this really does start to look like a flag that's attached to a pole or a string. So you can choose any edge that you want to pin things to. The next property is the phase, which is just a way to manually set the starting point of the animation, or if I turn the wave speed down to zero, so there is no animation, I could animate the phase that way and have complete control over that animation. Finally, we have anti-aliasing, which if I scale this out, you see it says best quality. It's defaulted to low, but we have the option to change it to medium or high. So again, I'll take a snapshot on high, put it back down to low, show that snapshot, and you can see that it just does a little bit better job of refining those pixels so they're nice and smooth. So if you're ever noticing a quality difference, just turn that up to medium or high. And if you're interested in seeing some more examples of how you might use this effect, I have an entire tutorial dedicated to using the wave warp effect to generate smoke and hair, and you can click the card above right now to watch it. But that's wave warp in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.